Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. It's Russell with Ink and Paper Blog. How are you doing today? I hope you are doing very, very well. I am coming to you because it's time to wrap up March and I actually had a very successful reading month in March. So I am excited to tell you guys about a bunch of books um, and I don't know, maybe most of them you've heard of, I'm not sure. But if you haven't, almost all of them I'm highly going to recommend. So please get your pencil, get your paper, get your Goodreads out because I'm going to be adding to that TBR. I am most certain. But I'm going to start with the book that I listened to to start the month of March. And that is, let me see if I can get it, What It Means When a Man Falls from the Sky by Leslie Nika Arima. Arima? Er, Arima? So again, I apologize. I butchered your last name, Leslie. But I did not butcher your book. One, you guys, the audiobook is fantastic. This is a collection of short stories, some of them science fiction in nature, some of them very based in real reality, um, all with um, sort of this setting of either the U.S. or Nigeria. Um, Leslie is phenomenal at creating time and place in such a short amount of time. Um, I'm, it's hard to talk about a short story collection, so I'm just going to tell you about the first story because I think it's so good and it will really bring you into wanting to read the entire collection. Um, and the first short story is, starts with a young girl opening a door into an apartment and being attacked. And then what Leslie does in the, in the short story is she goes back in time and leads you up to that event again. And you learn about this girl, you learn about her family, you learn about her sister, and you learn about her sister and the decisions she makes and how they affect our protagonist. Um, it is so well done. I totally was on the edge of my seat. Even though I knew how the story was going to end, I was totally bought in. Um, you know, I will say that Emily from Possibly Literate is the reason I read this book. Um, and she uh, talked about it in one of our visits to Green Apple Books. So if you haven't seen that video, please go check that out. Because um, she does an even better job than I will ever do of selling you on what it means when a man falls from the sky by Leslie Nika Arama. So, and I totally butchered that last name. Again, so sorry. Okay, so the next book I read was actually a graphic novel sent to me by my friend Richard over at Richard Reads, who is about to do a reboot of his channel. So if you guys haven't been a subscriber of his, definitely check him out because he's about to reboot it. Um, and he is super, super cool to listen to talk about books. And he sent me I Kill Giants, written by Joe Kelly and J.M. Ken. Nomura. And this is the story of a young girl who has created in her mind that there are giants that are going to attack the world and she is creating a way for her to com uh, combat those giants and destroy them when they do attack. And you find out as the graphic novel progresses that the giants are really a metaphor for something else she's having to deal with in her life. Um, she has a new girl move into town who becomes her friend, and she's always been socially awkward and sort of on the outside. Um, so it's weird for her to trust people, and especially with what's going on in her household. Um, yeah, but look at the art. It's all black and white. It's all gorgeous. It is compelling, and it's about to be a movie, which is super exciting. Um, and I really, really enjoyed I uh, Kill Giants by Joe Kelly and J.M. Ken Nomura. Um, it will tug at your heartstrings. No lies. Um, you think that you're reading about a young girl who really is going to attack giants, and yep, get you right there. Promise. Okay. The next book that I read this month was What We Lose by Zinzi Clemens. And oh my goodness, oh my goodness. This is a short little book that punches you in the gut. What I will say about this is I've read a lot of books lately that have really played with structure and narrative technique. And I love that, I truly love that. But if you struggle with things that are non-linear, or that try to jump and interweave different types of styles. This book may be a little bit harder for you, but it's worth it. The outcome at the end and the payoff is, is so fantastic. This is about a young woman who is basically dealing with the fact that her mother, who has been this strong, 
force in her life um, is uh, dying and dies of cancer. This is about her in a relationship with her mother. It's her and her relationship with her uh, uh, family and her inner relationships in just the world in general. Um, it is poetic. It, it has sort of a, I would say like a Virginia Woolf feel to it. A Jenny Olaf, 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 is that how you say your last name? Um, Department of Speculation. If you like that book, I think you would really like this book. One, Again, this cover is just gorgeous, um, and it's it's amazing, you guys. I was like teary-eyed and sad, but also just blown away by the beauty that was this book. So definitely read What We Lose by Zinzi Clements. Um, the next book I'm going to talk about probably doesn't need any introduction, and that's My Name is Leon by Kit DeWall, and I'm a little bit late to it because this book didn't actually take off in America, and that is a sad sad shame because again oh my gosh i think every book broke my heart there's a lot of crying going on this month this is the story of leon he is nine years old his mother deals with depression and has just had a baby who is less than a year old and so leon is basically the main caretaker caretaker of his younger brother now leon is from one relationship and is of mixed race and his younger brother is not his younger brother is 100 percent white and his mother goes into treatment for depression and they are put in a foster home. And because Leon is mixed race, um, he is not rushed to be adopted and um, his brother is taken away and adopted by another family. This is the story of a young boy dealing with the loss of his family and the creation of a new family through different people. Um, the, he gets put into a foster home with an older woman who their interactions and how sensitive she is to what Leon does, how he acts out and how she reacts to that. Um, she winds up actually getting sick and he winds up moving in with her sister who is, I just, I kind of imagine if the women of Absolutely Fabulous got really old, um, and lived alone and just sat chain smoking and being totally like grumpy crotchety old women that's this woman she's fantastically written um, and um, the relationships he has with all these different people and who he goes to become is so good it is so good. Now, this was shortlisted for the first novel award at the Costas, and it was worth every minute, and her new book is coming out, and I cannot wait, and that is My Name is Liam by Kit DeWall. This is actually the UK paperback cover, um, but it is available in the US, so don't think that you can't get it if you are here, um, and it's worth it. So worth it. The next book I'm going to tell you about, again, needs no introduction, and that's Tin Man by Sarah Winman. Um, this comes out in the U.S. in May of 2018, but as you know, it has been out in Britain for a hundred years. Um, I really, really liked this book. This book is exactly what everyone tells you. It will break your heart. It is about the story of two men um, who meet as children, their relationship. One of them grows up to be a gay adult man and one um, grows up to marry a woman um, but they've always had sort of this intimate relationship with each other um, at the start of the book you learn that the man's wife has passed away so there's heartache already from the beginning um, this is it's a really really good book I don't know that it trends in anything that's new um, the story you you probably have seen before and met before, but her language just does so much to tear your heart out and put it back and then tear it out and put it right back in again. And all the characters are so well drawn. And this US cover, you guys, come on. And that's Tin Man by Sarah Winman. Comes out May 15th. Um, definitely get yourself a copy because if you haven't read it already, you're gonna want to have read it. Um, okay, so three more books. The next book I read was Fire Sermon by Jamie Quattro. This is the story of a woman who basically is in a relationship with the first man that she ever slept with. Um, she's very religious and has a very religious look on life. And she's a writer and that influences who she is. She meets a poet and they connect via sort of email and internet. And then as time goes on, their relationship becomes more intimate. This book again is um, structured and 
in a way that is unique and different. Um, it reads, I don't want to say like a diary, but it's kind of like a letter slash, it's very um, epistolary at times. Um, the parts where she is dealing with her inner turmoil about the infidelity and making the choice is, is very good. It's very beautifully written. But it gets itself bogged down when it tries to become sort of this treatise on religion and literature. And I, I can't say that the author did enough to make me care about those parts. So I was rushing through sort of the academic aspects of the novel to get back to the reality of it. But it's one of those books where there's one, there's one action and it's this affair that really is what the whole book is about. So the problem is there's no plot driving you along. So if you don't care about what the characters are talking about, you'll get lost in, in the narrative, um, not really caring about what's gonna happen next. Jamie Quattro is a phenomenal writer. She can write, um, but I'm just not sure that all parts of this book worked for me. It was good, but um, I would be interested to see if uh, what else she has out there in the world. So that's Fire Sermon by Jamie Quattro. The next book I read actually was sent to me by the publisher. Um, thank you very much, Simon and & Schuster, and the publicist for it. And it is The Tangled Lands, and it's actually co-written by Paolo Bacaculup and Tobias Buckle. And I'm going to put that name there because I know that I just... Um, uh, butchered that beautiful, beautiful name right there. Now, both of these men are very, very um, famous sci-fi fantasy writers in their own right. And this book was sent to me and I read about it and I didn't actually get what I thought, which was actually a nice surprise. Um, so this is actually a collection of four novellas that are all set in the same world. Um, Pablo starts us off by creating the world in which we live. And it's a world where magic, when people use magic, it ca causes these brambles to sort of infiltrate and grow out of the ground. And so much magic has been used that city after city has been destroyed by these brambles. And we are at the start of the book in the one city that appears to almost be left. Um, that uses magic. And our main character in the first story has created a device that destroys the bramble so well that basically you could retake over cities. And he takes it to the mayor and the magician that um, is in charge of the town in which he lives. The magician takes the device and actually turns it into a way to see who has been using magic in the city, which is against the law, because if you do, you are killed. You are um, basically, only he is allowed to use magic. And he uses it as, as a hunting device and imprisons this man to create more devices for him. And the first story is excellent. You are on the edge of your seat. You feel the tragedy. This man has a young daughter and he really is only trying to um, create a world that will be safer for her. And it, the political intrigue is really good. The device is interesting. Um, the, the bad guys are internally bad. And it's really, really good. The second novella is about a, a woman who is the daughter of an executioner, one of the people who is called on to kill the people who use magic. Her father is dying, so she answers the call. And while she's gone, she comes back, and there's been an attack on her town and her children are taken by a cult who is cleansing the world of magic users because of what it has done. And she travels to try to save her children, and she is known as the executionist um, because of sort of this story. And it's one of those sort of tales of where something starts this big and starts to grow and grow and grow until it becomes a myth and becomes a legend and you're bigger than the story about you. And, um, it is really good, and she is a fantastic character. What she does and who she becomes, edge of your seat, you guys. So that one is written by Tobias. So they go back and forth in these four novellas. Um, the third novella was my least favorite. It was about some children dealing uh, with this. If you touch the bramble, you go into sort of this dead sleep. Um, and it was about one brother dealing with his sister in what he was trying to do to save her. Um, it wasn't my favorite, it wasn't bad. Um, and then the last story is about um, 
a young woman whose parents are uh, lo uh, people who work on forges, because I am totally uh, blanking on what that word is. Um, let me see. Um, blacksmiths. My goodness. And um, they're uh, asked to build some uh, uh, armor for a rich man. It doesn't work out and sort of how that changes who she is as a person. The, the first two and the last one are absolutely worth the price of the book, The Tangled Lands. But just know what you're getting into. Four different novellas two by each author. They connect, but the characters don't connect. The world connects. Um, I really enjoyed this, and you guys know I don't read a ton of fantasy. And so that's The Tangled Lands by Paolo Bacicala, uh, Calupe and Tobias S. Buckle. And again, Pablo, I am so sorry for butchering your name, but thank you for writing a book. I really enjoyed. And then the last book, you guys, I'm not going to talk about too much because it was my book club of the month for my Around the World in a Thousand Pages book club, and that's Purple Hibiscus by Chimanda Ngozi Adichie. This is the story of two young children and their religiously fanatic father and how their versions of the world change as they leave their sheltered life to live with their aunt and learn what the real Nigeria really is about. Um, this book is horrifying. This book is powerful. The main character... Um, uh, Kambali is fantastic and it is beautifully written and if you haven't read any Chimanda Ngozi Adichie this is a great place to start and it will make you want to read all of her books um, it is so good and um, I really realize now how important she is to the world of literature now that I've read just about everything that she's written and highly recommend highly recommend Purple Hibiscus by Chimanda Ngozi Adichie so I tried to keep this short, but I read a lot. So there you go. So you guys remember that I do have a deal with Green Apple Books in San Francisco. There's a code down below where you can get 10% off of any of these titles, and they do offer 99 cent shipping across the United States. So as always, if you are a return subscriber, thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed it. If you are new to my channel, welcome. Please subscribe. And as always, until next time, happy reading. Bye!